hey if you are new here this is chandan and you are watching the learning field okay so as promised we are studying the numerical analysis lecture series for basically gate exam and this lecture series is also helpful for csr net exam and any state level set exam and any other higher mathematics exam okay because uh, the syllabus for the gate examination of numerical analysis is very big okay as compared to csr net and as compared to set okay so we study the numerical analysis such a way that we mainly focused on gate and this is also this lecture series is also helpful for csr net also and set also okay so we mainly focused on gate so we first see the lecture series the syllabus for gate mathematics okay so the gate mathematics syllabus uh, for the gate exam is very big syllabus okay but uh, there are i think five four to six marks comes in uh csr net or sometimes uh seven to eight marks are also comes in md gate examination okay so four to six marks means uh the weightage of numerical analysis is very is in the gate exam is very big okay because uh gate exam is an 100 marks exam and the qualifying marks or cut off marks is 25 to 30 marks okay so in between 25 to 30 marks uh in the <coughs> four marks or five marks is uh play a very important role okay in the exam hall okay so the first one is numerical analysis solution numerical solution of algebraic and transcendental equation okay so in this uh, chapter we have bisection method secant method newton raphson method and fixed point iteration method okay now the second chapter is interpolation okay so this is a very important chapter also interpolation so in the interpolation uh, the syllabus or uh, theory of polynomial interpolation lagrange interpolation and newton interpolation that is newton uh, forward interpolation backward interpolation and so on okay number three is numerical analysis okay uh, sorry numerical differentiation number three number four is these are the topics numerical integration in numerical integration there are only trapezoidal rules and simpson one third rule and three eight rule okay number five is numerical solution of a system of linear equations okay so there are two uh, types of uh, system of linear equation solution system is direct method and indirect method or iterative method okay in a direct method the methods are gauss elimination and eluding composition and in the iterative method uh, it is jacobi iteration method and gauss seidel method okay so number sixth chapter is numerical solution of initial value problems of ODs only okay there is no pd section okay so and in uh, between in inside the chapter we have euler's method rankurta methods of order 2 okay but sometimes the questions comes using uh, picard's method and euler's uh, backward forward uh, differentiation so uh, this is the main uh, chapter so this is the main topics of gate mathematics okay so the syllabus for the gate mathematics is uh, this sixth chapter and the csr for the other exams like csr net uh, in between these uh, topics only and there are no uh, big uh, or there are no extra topics for any other exams okay so this is very big syllabus for numerical analysis topic a small topic but a very big syllabus okay so let's start <coughs> and before starting these topics uh, need some knowledge okay we need some knowledge in the errors errors system okay so what is errors in numerical analysis we need to know uh, the some basic terms and topics of numerical analysis okay so we read the basic terms and terminologies of numerical analysis first and then we go to the chapters or topics okay so uh, today's uh, lecture series mainly focused on the errors in numerical analysis or you can say it someone uh, some people say the theory of theory of errors okay theory of errors also okay so this is the chapter or this is the topic for today's lecture okay so if the lecture is helpful then please give a like this video share with your friends and subscribe the channel okay if, uh, if this lecture series is uh, helps you a little bit for your exam then you please like comment share and subscribe with your friends okay so uh, the quantity what is error the quantity true value minus approximate value is called an error what is that suppose if we take the example suppose one third okay so this is the true value of a number one third and if we uh, write the approximate value this is like 0 0.3333 and so on so this is a representation but this is not the true value so if we write 0 0.1 by thir one third equal to 0 0.33 
so this is an approximate value of one third this is not the true value of this one third value or one third this number one third okay so this a difference that is this uh, true value minus approximate value is known as errors okay now what are the sources of errors there are different sources of errors that is how errors are created or how errors are created or how errors are occur okay so the sources of errors are one is inherent error this type of error occurs when the data is obtained from the certain physical measurement okay of the parameters uh, of the proposed problem okay that is this error is already present in the statement of the problem before its solution okay suppose you have to collect the data and uh, after collecting that the data we have to solve some problem but you uh, incorrectly uh, uh, okay you incorrectly uh, uh, receive some data okay so that types of errors are known as the inherent error okay or if the mistake uh, is in the uh, value of the data or data or measurement okay so that types of error present in the in the after calculation is known as inherent error okay so the next one is round of errors okay so in numerical computation using a computer basically uh, the numerical computation using we use a computer okay so it can store a finite number of digit for a number for example like for the value of one third the computer takes the values up to a certain number that is this is suppose the representation of 0 0.1 third so the computer takes after a certain stage after some certain digits after decimal okay so to represent such numbers some digit must be discarded suppose the computer takes 0 0.3333 10 times okay then the rest digits after the tenth digit after decimal are uh, discarded in the arithmetic computation so there occur some error okay so there occur some error this type of error is known as rounding rounding of error or round of errors okay so now let us comes to the number three which is truncation error okay which, which is truncation what is truncation error so this error uh, occurs due to the finite representation of inherently in inherently infinite process okay so suppose for an example if we take suppose the series of cos x is this one so we all know the cos x uh, series for cos x is 1 minus x square by 2 factorial and so on okay this is an inherent in, inherently infinite process okay suppose if we calculate for any particular value of x suppose if we take the fifth term first fifth term and calculate the value of cos x then the rest terms that is uh, the terms after uh, or fifth term or the from the sixth term are not in our computation process so these types of error occurs uh, when occurs then we say that when you calculate the value uh, of cos x by taking the first fifth terms fifth uh, first fifth five terms of uh, from the series then in this case the occurs the errors occurs we call these types of errors is truncation errors okay now we go to the three types of basically errors so these are the sources of error now we comes to the uh, three types of error basically absolute error relative error and percentage error okay so what is absolute error so let x a be the approximate value of an exact number suppose x t this, this is a true value true value means this is one third value if we take the number one third if we take the number one by five or if we take the number 1 by 7 then these values are the true value and the decimal representation of these values are known as the approximate value if we take some digits after decimal okay so this is the fact now um, it says that then the absolute error represent by delta x this is equal to modulus of x t minus x a that is the true value of the number or true value of the quantity and the approximate value of the number or quantity okay so this is the definition of absolute error now uh, it is also satisfies there is a condition that absolute error is greater or equal to mod of x t minus x a okay that means what that means the error value upper bound of the error value is this one okay delta x that is the absolute value is the upper value of the error in this case okay now uh, the upper bound of the absolute error is strictly absolute error is less equal to 1 by 2 into 10 power minus m where the number 
is rounded off rounded to m decimal places so this is a very important formula okay sometimes uh, the question comes in based on this formula okay so this is a very important formula you can note this formula okay so absolute error is equal to 1 by 2 into 10 power minus and this is these are basic very basic formula but very important formula okay so this is the formula you can note this one okay now <coughs> the relative error is denoted by delta x and is defined by delta x equal to mod uh, sorry delta x delta x del x this is equal to delta x by mod of x a or delta x by mod of x t this x m is x m means what approximate value of the number and this is the true value of the number okay where where mod of x a not equal to 0 and mod of this is and mod of x t is not equal to 0 okay so in general so this is the definition of relative error okay relative error now in general the relative error measure the quantity of error and the quantity of measurement so the relative error is better measurement than the absolute error so if we calculate some errors in some calculations then uh, this uh, this relative error gives the better result than the absolute error okay so this is the fact this is says here now what is percentage error the percentage error is the measure is measured by delta x into 100 percent sometimes percentage error is called the relative percentage error also okay now there is a very important note so this is the definition of percentage error uh, let us take an example of these three types of error um, before that uh, there is a note the note that the relative and the percentage errors are free from unit measurement okay but the absolute error depends on the measuring unit so this is a simple note only okay now let us take an example first uh, find the relative absolute and percentage error uh, in x a when x a equal to 0 0.1429 and x t equal to 1 by 7 okay so absolute error this is equal to delta x we all know that this is equal to mod of x t minus x a so you just put the values and we get 0 0.003 3 by 7 which is equal to 0 0.000043 okay so rounded up to uh, this is two significant figure these four and three are known as significant figure becomes the definition of significant figure what is significant uh, figure we just comes of this definition now this uh, just know that um, this four and three are the significant digit first two significant figure or rounded up to two significant figure now relative error okay relative error delta x equal to uh, del x this is equal to delta x by x t and since this x t is positive here therefore uh, there is no need to uh, give the modulus or there is no need to take the modulus of the true value of the number okay if the number is negative then we obviously take the modulus of the number uh, for calculating the errors okay so this is equal to 0 0.00043 by 1 by 7 which is equal to 0 0.000 3 to 9 which is approximately 0 0.0003 okay this is the relative error and now we calculate the percentage error so percentage error equal to del x into 100 percent which is equal to 0 0.03 percent okay so this is the example of relative error absolute error at percentage error now uh, we comes to the definition of significant digit so what is significant digit this term is also very important in numerical analysis okay so the significant digits of a number are all its digits except for the zeros which appear to the left of the first non-zero digit okay but the zeros at the end of the number are always the significant digit okay that means what that means if we take a number if uh, some zeros are placed in the as a, in the left side of some non-zero quantity then these those zeros are not counted as the significant digit suppose if we take the example here 0 0.000456 and the number here one another number so these zeros are the uh, appeared in the this is first non-zero digit so these zeros are appeared in the left side of the first non-zero digit therefore these three zeros are not significant digit but the, if the zeros are appeared in the right side of some non-zero quantity or some non-zero digit then the zeros counted as the significant digit okay so in this number then there are three significant digit and in this number there are 
total eight significant digit okay that means what that means if zeros appear in the left side of some non zero quantity of any number then that zeros are not counted at the, or that zeros are not set the uh, significant digit okay the others number uh, 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 right side of the zero are known as the significant digit but if the zeros appears in the last of some non zero digit then these zeros are counted as the significant digit okay so this is the definition of significant digit and there is a theorem related to significant digit and relative error so the theorem says that number is correct up to end uh, significant figures or significant digits and the first significant digit is k then the relative error is less than 1 by k into 10 to the power n minus 1 okay so this is a very important theorem theorem says that uh, if the number correct up to n significant figure and as if the first non-zero significant digit is k and the first significant digit is k then the relative error is less than 1 by k into 10 to the power n minus 1 okay so this is the theorem and a very important theorem uh, related to uh, relative error and significant digit so uh, this ends the today's session okay so this is a very small lecture we just introduced the numerical analysis the syllabus of numerical analysis and the one very important chapter of numerical analysis uh, 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 so that is the theory of errors or uh, the errors okay because you have to some knowledge uh, in errors okay so if we uh, not know any uh, or if we don't have any knowledge about the errors then the numerical analysis is very uh, you can say that it is very tough uh, for someone or for somebody okay so that's why we take these classes or we discuss these sessions a very small sessions the theory of errors okay so this is the content for the video so if the content is helpful then please give a like to this video share with your friends and subscribe the channel okay thank you friends see you again in the next video thank you